Okay, so in this video, we're actually going to talk about how do you get uh, sample data in inside of a SharePoint list. As we know that working with SharePoint over time, some of those custom solutions that we uh, implement within SharePoint, they're performing well on day one of the release, but then over time, two years, three years, four years later, they you start to run into performance issues. You start to run into errors or threshold errors, and that's just because the company or the organization is using SharePoint and adding data on top of data. Maybe, maybe there's no archive information policy or anything like that in place to help keep purging the data. So what we want to do is to ensure that during the development process, we have enough data to work with, not only to do pressure tests against a custom solution, but also have enough data for uh, search uh, capabilities and paging features and capabilities that we need to write during the development process and not have to enter that in all of that in by hand. So as you can see, uh, as in the last video, it, we talked about the featured jobs uh, here, which is located here, and all these jobs are coming from that job custom list that we created that I've created in the past. So if we take a take a, a closer look at this list, uh, as of now, as I mentioned before, this was targeted to load the 100,000 items. Those 100,000 items are there. So now if you look in this job posting list, uh, you have all that data there. And of course, I did not enter this in by hand. I used a data generator, and the data generator I used is called Macaroo. So it, let's take a, a quick review of this schema, especially if you're just picking up this um, video for the first time and you're not following along with the with the series. Let's just quickly walk through the, the, the schema of the data. So this is a job posting. It has a list of postings for jobs. And within there, we have a created date that's out of the box, so we didn't create that. The department, the experience is active feature des description, title, summary, and all this other good stuff. And you also have different choice uh, site column types. So the experience is a finite list of experiences, one through uh, 15 years. And then uh, you also have another choice column for locations. We don't want these to be all any location in the world. We want to have these finite within these select 10 or 12, wherever the count is, for the different locations. So not only are we just generating random data, there's also randomization within a finite list of data that we want to display. And then finally, we have uh, another uh, site column type, which is the publishing image. And we'll talk through how do we get that into uh, a SharePoint list from that ra random data set. So let's take a closer look at Macaroo. So Macaroo is an online service that you can subscribe to. I have the mid-tier, there's a free account and then there's a mid-tier account. I have the mid-tier account and basically you get all the same capabilities between the tiers. Uh, it's just, it depends on how many uh, rows of data you can download uh, within a single download instance. So the free account allows you to download a thousand I don't think there is a cap, so I think you just have to download a thousand, a hundred times in order to get a hundred thousand items, which it motivated me to go to the mid tier account, which I can download a hundred thousand items at a time. So I just have to download that ten times in order to get a million records. Okay, so if you look at this mapping here, basically what this is going to do is to allow you to pick different field names and you can customize these and then basically a uh, data type for that field so if you take a look at the job title if you click into this guy let's find it here i'm gonna do a quick search on the different uh column types and you look at the job title oops sorry it shows you the different titles right and this can be across any industry and i think i haven't taken a closer look at the data because really I, all i need is the content per se not necessary i'm not that interested in is this the right uh for the right field it, are these the right titles and all this other good stuff but i think those do line up but if you look at if you just browse this right and look at the personal data type category you will see all the different uh data options if you were going to create like a, a personal record or a person record so you you know race language and all this other good stuff different names different full names or uh, 
first names and genders and all this other good stuff. So, you know, you, you have a lot of capabilities and flexibilities with the, the type of name. So not only are you able to get the, the pressure of the amount of data, you can have data that's actually relevant and relatable. So, you know, that's going to be the same for each one of these um, different types, right? So I think you kind of get that uh, as far as like sentences, you know, it's just the amount of data that's in the sentence structure, the same with paragraphs. And then here you can pick a range as this thing is randomizing, you know, how many sentences you want for the summary, how many paragraphs, you know, obviously we want a lot more text for that description section. Uh, but then the interesting piece really comes into the custom list. So as I mentioned for the location, we don't want all those different cities and provinces or, or whatever across worldwide. We actually want to limit those down to a finite list. And this is where you just uh, specify a custom uh, common delimited list and you select the randomizer uh, button and that will randomize within that list for each record that it generates and also i use that same trick for the image uh so basically what i've done i went through and let's just take a closer look at this i went through uh the the images library and extracted all the urls for i think it was like 10 or 12 images and just basically made a common delimited list for each one of those URLs, drop that into uh, the random generator, and now I have random images, publishing images that live in the images library within SharePoint, part of my random data set. Uh, and I did the same thing for experience and salary because these are choice columns. So basically I went through each one of those choice columns, uh, select all for all the options and the choice, drop them in the notepad, comma, delimit those, and then drop them in here. So now it generates a finite list based on the custom list uh, that I am specifying. So once you kind of get all these fields in here, and obviously you can name these fields whatever you want. They don't have to exactly match what you have in the site column because in the CSOM code, which I'm going to show you here in a bit, you would do a mapping exercise that kind of takes like image URL and then drop that into our publishing image site column. The summary um, property of the object, uh, JSON object, and then drop that into, you know, the summary site column that we specify in the postings list. All right, so let's take a quick preview of what this JSON take looks like. And, you know, it's good to do a preview so that way you can ensure that you're getting what you expect. And this is just, you know, as we mentioned, these are my publishing images here. There's your department. There's your summary. You can kind of get a sense of how that looks. Uh, your description, you know, that one has one paragraph. Some of them have several paragraphs. So, you know, once you start to look at this random data within the SharePoint list, you get a nice filled out uh, job posting entry that kind of looks and feel like a uh, content manager will eventually use uh, this, this system for in order to enter in the job information. Okay, so, so that's the way that you can uh, preview that. And now we're ready to download the data. And as I mentioned, you know, I, I'm, I'm selecting a thousand here. So let's just do a thousand um, hyphen one. And basically that would just save that off and you can just take a look at this in any json editor and i think in my scenario it's just going to be visual studio all right so as this guy pops up in studio still reading it in it's only a thousand items or did i select the one with a hundred thousand all right so this is just a, a standard uh, JSON object for, you know, with an uh, array of uh, objects in the in the standard JSON format. And you should be able to read this in as you would with any other JSON file. Right. So that's that. Now let's take a, a quick look at the uh, CSOM code that I use to to map this data in. So this is going to look at this path here in order to pick up that JSON file. It's going to stream it in. I'm actually doing some things here. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. We're just going to brush through this C sharp code because actually I want to focus on the random data generating how we're doing the mapping. And then in the next video, we'll talk through uh, all the different options um, with how to code this and you know, actually take a closer look on how you actually will develop uh, th this type of import. 
so uh, here I have a service or a data manager that I created, custom data manager here. That's going to get my SharePoint context. Again, this is all CSUM. Uh, this reads in the JSON file, streams it in, and loads all that into memory. Uh, so now I have the JSON in memory. Uh, I use that manager to go, which now I have a hook to SharePoint, and I get the SharePoint posting list. And then from there, I, I have this custom model, right? This job idle model to where I'm mapping all that JSON into that model, which is it's just a little bit cleaner code. It just allows you to do a lot of IntelliSense as I'm kind of working with those uh, test data items within this code. Uh, for testing purposes, as is highlighted here, I have a hundred. Uh, potentially, I have a hundred thousand items. I know the sample we downloaded was only a thousand, but I think this guy here, this real JP posting, is a hundred thousand item. I want to do a test sample, right? So you, this can be ten or hundred, whatever. So for testing purposes only, I'm only going to take the ter the first hundred. Uh, this line here, you actually uh, see me playing around with the different method types uh, as I look at how different ways that we can optimize the CSOM code. Because as you will find out in the next video, CSOM code is going to be a lot slower than uh, full trust code. And just just that's the nature of the beast, right? Because each request that you make with a CSOM uh, execute query is a web request versus where, you know, where we're doing like updates and things like that with well, full trust code, it was a direct line or direct connection to the underlying API, which was connected to the database to store that. So you're talking, you know, a fraction of a millisecond versus several milliseconds when we're dealing with CSOM. So in, in these three different methods, we're going to talk in the next video, how do you optimize that in order to get the best performance because you have that network latency because we are making service requests across the wire. So for this one here, we're doing something very simple. We're just going to take it straight up, single thread, one item at a time, and it's not asynchronous, it's synchronous, uh, and we're really just going to do something very simple to get the job done. This is probably the slowest way to do that, and we'll talk about that in the next video on how to optimize that. So more to come in the next video. Uh, but as far as mapping, uh, this is passing in uh, that JSON collection of this is your test data, this is your SharePoint list, and from that SharePoint list, you need to add an item, and then for each item, that's where we do our mapping. This mapping, because we're dealing with very simple columns, right? I, I mean, it's, it's single line, multi line, choice, uh, yes, no. So these are very simple columns with the exception of the publishing. A site column here uh, for the JP image. That one we have to do a little uh, manipulation. Basically, standard image tag, you load in that image URL from your test data, set that as a source attribute, and then this gives us an opportunity to set the rendition ID to one, which, if you take a quick look, gives us the nice pretty thumbnail that we see right here, uh, not only in the uh, display item view, but also in the list view. Uh, when we're uh, seeing all of these um, job postings in the list, right? Uh, somehow you skipped way past that, okay? Uh, real quickly, so this guy here. So that image rendition one is was given that this, that nice crop thumbnail to be up here here. But as we talked about in the previous video, because of the way that we do our extraction of the publishing image, we're able to define or redefine that rendition ID here to get things nice and neat, nice and uniform, and then working as expected and actually perfectly within a responsive design. So uh, again, that's publishing date. We do an update and then we do an execute query. And if we execute this, and I think I have this going into my test uh, job posting list, you will see that this guy will kind of drip through and add these items one at a time safely you know synchronous and it's just doing its thing very slow and steady right so this is going to take and this is you know we only did the top 100 so this may take a little bit um we're not going to wait for it all right so let's just kill it but then if you look at again just a sneak peek into what we're going to do in the next video this one does things in batches 
And if you look at the difference in performance, uh, I think this does it in batches of 50. So basically, it adds 50, does an execute query, add another 50, does an execute query, and is done 10 seconds you're done right so we watch that thing go through 10 seconds uh with a single single thread single item uh 10 seconds i think we probably got 10 in there 30 maybe but you know in 10 seconds with the batches we can do it all 100 right so when you're dealing with a hundred thousand items performance becomes a very key factor especially depending on how you're going to be executing or running these jobs and how do we do that and how do we code for that is going to be uh something to come in the next video so that's it i mean macaroo is the tool that i use but like i say do a google search out there there are other random data generators i think the key is just to make sure that you have a custom list field to where you can specify those finite lists of custom data attributes that you want to map to um make sure you have a nice variety of data elements that you can kind of load in and just get a sufficient amount of data. I think a hundred thousand or maybe a million is good. But usually, if you solve the performance issue for a hundred thousand, going up to a million, you're not going. You know, is those same uh, techniques should work. I don't think you're going to do anything different code-wise for a hundred thousand versus a million because you know you're all you're always going to be dealing with things in batches and paging through it and make sure that your indexes are in place. So I think a hundred thousand is a great number to work with. Uh, and then you just kind of go from there. So that's it for this video. Again, I just wanted to walk through how do you get random test data into a SharePoint list to kind of help you out during the development phase. In the next video, we're actually going to go through this C Sharp code in depth and talk about the different nuances with CSOM and especially coming from full trust code with a lot of these things we didn't have to consider or have to you know take into consideration. And things you know just performed well by default memory was the only main thing that we were concerned with but here we have this latency because this service calls and there's a lot of key things that you have to do all right so i'll catch you in the next video and, and until then take care.